Heidegger wants to use the word technology to talk about uh, our uniquely contemporary way of experiencing the world. Everything is interconnected, everything is exchangeable, and all meaningful distinctions have been gotten rid of, except this one sort of empty distinction, to be efficient and optimized. And you see it all over the place. We're so used to it that we don't even notice it. That's what great philosophers are supposed to do, is help us see what, what's going on in our understanding of being. Efficiency demands a kind of standardization. You have a few ways that you become very, very good at, and then you repeat them over and over and over and over and over again. You have these sort of frightening subdivisions that you see as you drive in from the airport, usually, where all the houses on the side of the hill are the same shape, the same color. They just discovered that's the most efficient way to build a house, and they just build them all that way, and everybody manages to live that way, and so everything is totally standardized. Everything is just resources to be optimized. The most efficient way to feed people is to have a few ways of doing it, and then you impose it everywhere. The most efficient way to make a broad range of goods available to everybody is to do it on a big scale, like Walmart does, and, right, and make everyone indistinguishable and have everything organized and efficiently laid out. It's just to get the world as organized as possible and to bring more and more into this total organization. It's really systems thinking. Everything's a system. The airplane is no longer an object when it's sitting on the runway. It's a cog in the transportation system. And you might think, well, at least you're going to be there to either take the plane or not take the plane. But no, the tourist industry has been set up for it to make you a filler of this potentiality for running around that's on the runway. And why will people go just to get a rest and get more energetic so that they can plunge back into the rat race, in which they're all replaceable. They're just doing some job efficiently. And if somebody comes along and does it more efficiently, they can be replaced. One of the dangers of technology is it re relieves us of the burden of having to develop skills. Technology is always sold as a labor-saving device. When you buy the latest technology for cooking, the promise is that you can cook as well as a master without any of the skills the, the master has. And, and that goes for everything with music as well. So all of us now today can enjoy music of a quality unimaginable to most people in the history of the world in the comfort of our homes with very little cost and very little effort. That's a great promise. And who, who, would, who would give up on that, that pleasure of hearing music in that way? But the danger is that we give in to the seductions of technology to the degree that we lose all of these skills. The internet is actually a much better example because what the internet is doing is it's basically transforming all reality into information. Everything on the internet is equal. You can have the most important information right next door to the most trivial. You can find out uh, on Twitter where, what your friends had for breakfast and you can find out also that there were 100 people killed in Iraq that day with Google and find anything and you can go in Wikipedia and get any facts about anything. And that in a certain way is terrific. If you, but if, if you just use it for something relevant, but if you think that that's just the best thing in the world, just to have more and more information, more and more transformable stuff, more and more applications for your iPhone that make it able to do more and more things, and that that's just what it's all about, everything gets leveled. There's no meaningful differences anymore between what's important and not important, what's trivial and what's uh, uh, crucial, what's uh, relevant and irrelevant. It's all reduced just to more information. If you want to really be efficient, you don't want this kind of, uh, you know, interference that, hey, this is Sunday or this is uh, Christmas, so that means that you have to stop that. Or this is the middle of the night, what do you think you're doing? No, 24-7 is the, one of the great great achievements of our civilization. Things, some things go on all the time, are available all the time, and it's very handy. You know, three o'clock in the morning, I rush to my computer and I can Google, and 
Nobody's going to say to me on the screen, this is not available. This pay is not available because you're supposed to be sleeping. No, they're going right, to give it to me. So it's absolutely great. I benefit from it myself. But you can see what this is doing. What is it doing is making us look at time as something that is infinitely uh, usable and extensible. doesn't matter when it is. I can access right? as against being, as it were, forced back into understanding that there are times that are just different, that have a different quality. It's not a, appropriate to use them in this way. And it's true that it changes us. So we have to become the kind of people who are satisfied with the sort of commodities that are delivered to us. But technology makes us also the sort of flexible people who uh, are satisfied with a sort of cheap imitation of all the goods that, that uh, deeply skillful practices deliver. I've heard that flamenco artists have a deep aversion to even being recorded for this very reason, that they, they have just an intuitive sense that recording them and making their performance reproducible in all sorts of foreign contexts is, is uh, distorting what flamenco is really all about. Technology is something to be grateful for. We have to learn how to not be seduced by technology, to keep this, this drive alive, this desire alive, to be humans. In his last years, Heidegger was trying to figure out how to resist the technological understanding of being and, and have a meaningful human life in spite of it. We're speaking to a malaise that a lot of people feel, but they may feel, well, I feel this malaise, but I mean, I have no right to because this is progress, right? This is civilization, or this is modernity, or this is, you know, we, we've made this tremendous leap ahead from all those benighted peasants in the Middle Ages, so who am I to complain? This sense of being, of being sort of morally compelled not to protest, which a lot of people have alongside the feeling that something's wrong here, but I can't believe the feeling because reason tells me the contrary. We can explode that uh, myth. The problem is how to respect technology, appreciate technology, use it to get rid of all the dumb stuff that we used to have to do, and yet not let it get rid of what matters and what is local and what is unique and what is significant and meaningful for us. If I think nature around me is nothing but meaningless stuff waiting to be optimized, then why shouldn't I just put a nice big hotel here, make a lot of money, all the people can see the ocean?